So as we move into the Greeks, we're starting with what's called the Orientalizing Period. We're not going to worry too much about the Geometric Period. And during the Orientalizing Period, trade and colonization will increase dramatically. We also see a lot of Near Easterners coming to Greece as early as the 9th century. We also see influence from the Egyptians and the Near East on art. The reason we're seeing people from the ancient Near East moving towards the Greeks and getting involved with the Greeks is again for trade. There's a lot of goods coming from Asia and they need to cross what we've covered as the ancient Near East in order to enter into the Mediterranean. So obviously we're going to have a lot of contact there. So this is what we're looking at in terms of the Greek Archaic Age. Uh, the areas in violet are sort of classic Greek areas. The areas in red are more or less uh, city-states and gives you an idea of the extensive colonies even though we're not into classical Greece yet. We're going to start with uh, what we believe is Heracles and Nesos. And this is a solid bronze statue where we see a man and a centaur hand in hand. This may actually be the centaur Nesos fighting with Hercules, with Her uh, Heracles. The composite creature is probably influenced by the East, where we've seen the Lamassu and other composite or anamorphic forms. Here we see the half-man, half-horse, where the half-horse is kind of attached to the back half of the man. It's kind of an awkward situation, but this is very early uh, work, so it's not that surprising. The man is larger, indicating his possible eventual victory, and you'll notice the figures are nude. That's going to be a hallmark of the Greeks. The idea that male figures should be depicted as nude. However, female figures are only nude if they're Venus, an issue that we've run into already with prehistoric art and elsewhere. So this is very early, very basic, but it does give us a little bit of a narrative. It's probably something that was tied to a temple and was used for teaching purposes. Then we have the Apollo. And in this case, this is Apollo just before he takes on Ivan the Russian, eventually dying only to be avenged by Rocky. What we actually see is this bronze Apollo. And we're seeing that geometric and, or that uh, orientalizing form again, where they're picking up influences from other societies. This is very much sort of a sculpted form of Minoan art. When you think of those long forms that we saw with the Minoans, the long muscular legs, the very pinched waists, etc., this is very much that feel. And we're seeing an increased interest in human anatomy. He looks a little bit more realistic than... Heracles just before. And by the way, I'm not mispronouncing Hercules. Hercules appears in multiple traditions, and in the Greeks it's pronounced Heracles. Anyway, we're not sure if this is a man or a god. The reason is there isn't much to indicate one way or the other. He doesn't have supernatural figures. He doesn't have animalistic characteristics. He's not made of gold. So it's difficult to say. But he will come up yet again.